She raised my brother and I, uh, so everything that I have is thanks to her. And then I wrote it for Mother's Day, so it was her gift. His gift to his mother, a song just for her, that is now helping him pursue his own gift. But I'm concentrating more in uh, hip hop. It's more, my rap is more like sentimental. Like it just, I just talk about life. I talk about real stuff because I notice that even if I make it about myself, people can relate to that. They can make it, they can feel that it's, it's about them. Songs from deep in his heart as he takes us to the heart of his story. María, para mí has luchado más duro que el santo contra las momias. <laughs> Gracias. Diego Rea has always been a dreamer. Born without much in Mexico, dreams and family were about all he had. His hopes to be a soccer player were sidelined, too expensive to get from his town to the city for practice. But he had other dreams, and his mother would help him get there. So my day job has been a plumber, and... Oh. What, yeah, what, what's your dream job? Uh, my dream job is to become a professional artist. So first off, how did you get into plumbing? What, what got you into that? So um, I went to MTI. Um, I actually did uh, HBAC first, so I was a service technician. And then um, I decided after I was done with that, I decided to apply at Peterson Plumbing and Heating and then uh, they gave me an opportunity as a plumber. So after that, then uh, I signed in for the local 25 plumbers and pipe fitters, and then it's just been great from there. I, I've been doing plumbing since then, five years. My music career started back in high school, uh, 2008. Um, I used to write just like poems and stuff like that, and then like there, I had some girlfriends that they, they did like that stuff, and they talked to one of my friends that uh, he made music at that time and he came up to me and asked me if I wanted to record and uh, I, I agreed and first song we did was like a little hit around our friends and then I just been making music since then. Kind of a combination of, of poetry, spoken word and music, right? Yes. All combined into one. Yes, that's exactly what, what do you like about, what is it about music that you like when you make a connection with someone and you know you can tell that that music got to them some way? Um, I just, I love because people, people tell me that they can like transport like a lot of the times uh, my songs talk about when I was a kid, when I was little, the way, you know, I saw things when I was when I was a kid, and uh, they it can they say that they can go back in time to like those moments, and like I can see their expressions, you know, like when I'm when I'm singing that song to them, I can feel like like they're they're like I can feel their feelings, and then that just makes me like feel the best. His brother told him about a competition in Los Angeles with Zoom auditions. Why not take a chance? There was only one song to send, of course, a song he wrote for his mom. So how did you go about picking the one song? Because you knew this one has to, has to mean something, man. It has to do something. Yeah, so um, this song that I wrote, I wrote it 10 years ago. And then uh, I wrote it for my mom because she was a, she was a single mother and uh, she raised my brother and I. Uh, so everything that I have is thanks to her. And then I wrote it for Mother's Day, so it was her gift. And uh, every, every time since then, I posted it on Facebook and it did pretty good, uh, YouTube as well. And uh, just, I had a lot of people break into the song, like just start tearing and I knew that was a good, good song. He did his best, sent it in, and went back to work. So the, co the contest is called Tengo Talento, Mucho Talento, which it will be like equivalent to America's Got Talent. 
um, and it's over in LA. So. It's... So you filmed a Zoom audition, sent it in, thinking, whatever, it's worth a shot, right? Yes. What happened next? Did you get a phone call? So yeah. So after that, um, two weeks later, which I was expecting, I was I wasn't expecting it that soon. Um, two weeks later, they give me a call and uh, they're like, "Congratulations, you made it to the auditions. Can you fly on Monday to LA? We'll pay for your tickets." And then like I couldn't say anything. I was just like on the phone, like, uh, and then. <laughs> but my wife, she was. Uh, She's, she was pregnant at that time, and then that exact date that they wanted me to fly and, and record the, the uh, auditions, uh, she was gonna deliver the baby. So I looked at my wife, and then she's like, I was like, it's from, it's from the show, they want me to go over to LA. And uh, she just looked at me like, are you serious? <laughs> and I was like, okay, I guess. And I was like, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it. Family first always. He figured there was no way he would get a second chance. But weeks later, he got the call again. Now he would have to perform in person. So you, you went out there. How were you with nerves? Were you, were you nervous when you hit the stage? Yes, I was, I was really nervous. Uh, so because one, I mean, every, every Josh, they're, they're, they're really famous. So, uh, and then especially one of them, I listened to his radio, he has a radio show, and he's, a, he's a comedian. So I listen to that radio show every morning when, when I go to work. Yeah, like driving to work and like whenever I'm home, like I listen to that radio show. So, um, uh, yeah, I mean, having them right in front of me and like being, because I don't perform like often live. So that was it's just a mix of everything like, um, yeah, I was just insecure and like, it was just, I mean, the only shot that I had. And so, yeah, I was pretty nervous. All right. So talk about being nervous. I'm going to share one with you real quick. When I interviewed the president of the United States at the White House, I was so nervous going in. My heart was beating, blood pressure through the roof. And then the second I started, I went to my zone. Did you do that? Yes. Okay. So, yeah. So I was, I was. I was gonna talk about that. Like I was shaking and they were asking me questions and like I was just shaking. But calmed by the person who has always been able to calm him since he was a little boy. The same person the song is about. As soon as I started performing, I went into my zone and like, like I just kind of, I, the, the way I felt that uh, it was just like playing, like doing play in my brain and like I just let it happen. After the song, he stood up and he like clapped and like his face, like you can see on the video, uh, it's on YouTube and Facebook everywhere. You can see like when he was listening to the song, he just like kind of like, wanted to cry. And uh, he's like, yeah, that got me like deep. And every one of the judges are like, yeah, that was, that was amazing. And uh, I've been reading the comments and the people's like, oh my God, like that took me back to when I was little, like, when I was little, like, literally, I felt like it was rope for me. So a lot of the people say the same stuff, and that's the one that gave me the pass to the semifinals. Wow. So the, uh, the fact that you can take humble upbringings, right, tough things in life that happen to you, you can dig down into that now, and you know how to use that to, to produce something that can test the lives of others and hopefully get you to the next round. Yes, exactly. Surprising even himself, he won, inspiring so many others rooting for him then and even more now. Preparing a new song, one about growing up on a dirt floor in a small home with big dreams. When it, whenever somebody does something different, something big, people's like, oh my God, he's from the Quad Cities. Like, they can't believe it. He's, the person is from there. I'll t I'm telling you because I've seen stuff happening with other artists and stuff like that. And I, I'm just, you don't know the person, but it just makes you feel like really proud. And, uh, and then Mexico is the same thing. It's like small town. And then like for something like this to happen, people's like, oh my God, like, and I've, I got a lot of messages saying ex the exact same thing. They're like, I don't know you, but I, you know, I love your music now. And like, I feel really proud. And 
And uh, yeah, so. And if some little boy or girl is sitting on a, on a floor, a dirt floor in Mexico, and here's your music and you touch their lives and identify with them. How cool is that? Oh, well, I mean, yeah, that's, that's just amazing. It just gives me the chills thinking about that, really. I can't stop. If I, if I, if there's a time, it's like now. I need to keep on going on this and uh, hopefully, um, yeah, I can make my dreams come true. Make sure to follow Diego's journey on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube now. Rhea Blue Marlboro. Check it out. For more stories, please subscribe, tell a friend, and share these stories. Inspiring stories of everyday people doing cool stuff. Thanks to our sponsors, supporting people going after their dreams and living life to the fullest. Blackhawk Bank and Trust, Peterson Plumbing. This is The Heart of the Story with Gary Mativier.